and welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. Um, so, where we left off last episode, we just finished research into our spinal laser, and we are now starting work on a power plant and a few levels of sensor. Um, once we get those technologies up and running, um, we can go ahead and start building our uh, basic combat ships. What I might actually do is just design a small sensor that's just big enough for our actual combat uh, frigates. And then later on, once I get more efficient sensors, we can get um, a nice big system-wide one um, to watch for anything. Because if we're sitting on top of the jump point, then that's fine. They're going to be able to see anything coming through. Even if they've got like only one or two million kilometers of range, they'll be able to see it. So that's our reactor. Um, gas turret is fine. So yeah, what I'll do is I'll remove these two and I will get a small active sensor geared for large ships. Five million kilometers. That's beautiful. Um, there we go, and I'll get one for fighters, and one for missiles. Okay, actually that missile one is very, very crap. Um, we need a bit more range on size 6 missiles, so... This is the one we're actually going for. What was the size 10? 1.5 million kilometers. Might actually up that to about six. Okay. So we got those. Um, this one can go away. And this one can go away because those are the smaller ones. Uh, okay, so as soon as fire control is done, get those sensors up and running. So those will so we'll we'll put the missile sensors on the point defense uh, frigate, and we'll put the um, other sensors on the uh, offensive frigates. They're only like a hundred tons tops for the offensive ones so they're not going to put too much mass on t onto the um, other ones but we'll go ahead and hmm, look like we've lost our naming convention oh well um what do we have we have our laser okay so we've added a spinal laser right so as you can see here damage is zero and range is zero. And we've got a tracking speed here. Now the reason why your range is zero and your damage is zero is because we don't have, well, we don't have power, but we don't have any fire controls either. These stats here are entirely dependent on your fire control capability, right? So because we don't have a fire control, we can't fire our, our, our lasers. There's no, there's no possible way to aim them. So our effective range is zero and our effective damage is zero. Um, the tracking speed, because it's a spinal mounted, in other words, it's not a turret mounted, the tracking speed is directly related to our movement speed. However, there is a minimum of rating. Um, I believe it's, let's have a look. It's, a, it's, it's a base fire control speed rating. So your, so your base tracking speed will always be a minimum of your, um, of your highest fire control tech. So because we have 4,000, our base tracking speed is 4,000. So even on a stationary ship, you're going to have a minimum of tracking speed. Um, obviously, that 4,000 tracking speed is not going to be very useful. So we're definitely going, going to want that fire control. But we'll get that once we actually get the improved range. Because at 24,000, we have um, a maximum of 96, so uh, just under 200,000, which is not... Um, which, which I'm not, which we're not happy to run with. So we've got our spinal laser, and we will add one power plant. 
so we got our power output lining up which is good and we don't have the fire control yet so that will have to remain as it is we don't have our engine tech engine either but that um, is coming so we'll add that in once we have it so moving along nicely waiting for our technology to appear and complete Actually, we're going to just do five days because get it done. All right, there's the scout again. Let's see if he runs back home. Yeah, he's going to run back home. Yeah. <clears throat> So chugging away, cost tower it's almost done. There we go. Gas tower is ready. Put those plants in. Put those uh, labs into fire control range because we need that ASAP. So I'm actually going to rename this to. Yeah, moment will do, and we are going for a. Brigade. There we are. So we'll just get the gas turret. All right. Um, I'll wait, and what I'll do is I'll basically do a design copy once we have this built, and just strip out the laser and the power plant, and swap it out for the gas turrets. So they're going to be essentially identical, except for yeah, upgrade the armor. Um, one thing. Um, yeah, they're going to be essentially identical, except for the armaments. Um. One thing to note, if you're, if you're, if you, when you select, when you hit new, when you create the design initially, it will give you your best possible armor at that time. If you get armor technology after that, um, if you get armor technology after that, you have to hit the new armor and that will up, upgrade you to the latest possible armor. Um, new armor um, is smaller. So you always have the same amount of protection. So you have the same um yeah, you have the same armor protection, but new armor is smaller. Uh, so it takes up less mass, which means you can either add more armor layers for the same tonnage, or you have a smaller and th therefore faster ship overall. So it's always better to improve your armor. Um, I believe it all does increase... It, it does change what kind of materials you require um i believe early armor uses duranium and then it slowly shifts into tritanium and then it apparently eventually moves into neutronium but um yeah don't quote me on that so we've got a frigate we're still waiting for the fire control and the engine so we shall continue on And he's appeared again. It looks like he's actually going to be exploring the system right now. I have January and October. January is still going to take too long. We might have to... We might, we're going to have to use this guy once the fire control is done. So we're getting about a hundred points. Ten power for propulsion thirty. Thirty and ten. Um, we'll see which one of these actually gives us more technology based on I mean because we're still gonna have to actually develop the fire control as well. And we do have more technology, so um just the policy bonus, that's fine. Your defensive scientist. October 2033, we're still a few months away.
And another diplomacy bonus boost for our diplomats. Um, Amorite Brown, that's a scout ship, so we don't care. Uh, he attempted to ram Georgia. Yeah, so invaders like to ram. So they will try and, well, ram your ships. Um, ram ships ramming deal a stupid amount of damage, like a few hundred damage. However, um, they will pretty much kill themselves immediately. Um, so if your ship can survive it, you're pretty much, you're fine. If you can't survive it, then, well, you lose both, you both lose a ship. But he loses a ship either way. So, uh, ramming is definitely beneficial for us. At least at this stage. Alright, fire control is almost ready. There we are. Alright, so what kind of fire control do we have now? We have... 128 doubled is 250,000. Um, it'll probably have to do because the next step is 16,000 and that's going to take over a year. So that, yeah, that's going to have to do. And we'll get four times multiplier. So four times range, four times multiplier. Okay, so. Beam fire control. Beam fire control is the more complicated of the two. So uh, let's let's read missile control, All right? So missile fire control. Um, the way missiles work, okay? Your active sensor needs to be able to lock onto the ship. So once you have them within active sensor range, then you need to also be, have to have your missile fire control be able to lock onto the ship as well. So you follow the exact same rules as re for resolution and range and all that. Um, fire controls get a range bonus. See, they, they have like looks like triple range um, compared to the same size and stats um, active sensor. Um, but yeah, so as long as both systems can detect and lock onto the target, then you can launch missiles at them. Um, with missiles, the accuracy rating is missile speed divided by target speed multiplied by maneuver rating, um, and then with another multiplier of crew rating as well. Um, so as long as your missile is faster than their ship and has a um, decent amount of maneuver rating, um, you can get uh, your uh, you, you, can pretty, you can get a pretty reasonable hit. So it only really has two things you have to worry about. The maneuver rating of your missile and the speed of your missile. And both of them just have to be higher. And the higher you can get them, the better. Um, eventually there's a point, obviously, if you have more than 100% accuracy, there's not much point in making them faster or more maneuverable. But um, obviously enemies are going to get faster and your, your missiles... The, it's, yeah, at the end of the day, the faster the missiles and the more maneuver rating they have, the better and more accurate they are. That's straightforward. Beam fire controls are a whole other kettle of fish. So, beam fire controls have a flat accuracy, right? So, that accuracy ranges between 100% at the minimum range of 10,000 kilometers and then 0% at the maximum possible range for the fire control. So, in at this one, 128,000, double it is 100, 256,000 kilometers, right? And so, at 257,000 kilometers, you will not be able to hit because your accuracy will be 0%. At 128, which is halfway, you have 50% accuracy, and it's a linear rate of accuracy drop-off. So, 100% here, 0% there, straight line through the middle, right? Then you have then you have to factor in tracking speed. So tracking speed is basically how fast your fire control can handle um, following the target, right? So the faster the target is, the um, the faster your tracking speed needs to be. If the target is slower than the tracking speed, then your fire control is able to easily handle um, keeping them locked on. If it's faster, then it has to do more complex math by figuring out where they're going to be, aiming ahead of them, and all that stuff. Um, it's basically arbitrarily 
um, determined. So at the end of the day, your tracking speed needs to be faster than the target. You don't get a bonus to hit if you're faster than the target, but you do, but you do take a penalty to hit um, if your tracking speed is slower than the target. Um, and that penalty is equivalent to your tracking speed divided by their um, by the target speed as a multiplier, right? So if somebody comes along at, at 20,000 kilometers, it's going to be 16,000 divided by 20,000, which is something like 95%. So you take the total accuracy at the range based on the rate, and then you divide it, and then you multiply it by the, whatever the 16,000 divided by, um, what, what, what the tracking divided by target speed is. Um, and of course, you can't get it above one. So if they're slower, you don't get the bonus. Um, with the missiles, every five seconds that you have them on sensors, so you don't have to have them locked on with fire control, just with active sensors, every every five seconds, you get a 2% increase, uh, a tracking time bonus, up to your technological maximum, right? Um, and that will eliminate a portion of the, of the loss, right? So if you have a 10% accuracy penalty and you have a max tracking time bonus of 20%, um, after after a few seconds, I think I've already I remember I think I've already talked about this. After a few seconds, you'll eliminate that penalty, and then you hit them with a hundred percent accuracy at your range, depending on what range you fire. Once again, it can't go above a hundred percent. You don't get a bonus to hit. You just eliminate any penalty to hit. So, tracking speed is useful up to a point. Once you get it up to about twenty thousand, you can pretty much leave it there until you find ships that are moving faster than that and then just upgrade because you probably get your tracking speed up higher than that anyway the range is what's more important than that but tracking speed um for point defense beam controls obviously you need it to be faster but you can eventually start slowing down using a, sl a slower multiplier um to just keep up with ships for your anti-ship point defense so um that is that. And then, of course, on top of all of that, we'll go ahead and actually create this. On top of all of that, you have your weapon fire, you have your actual weapon control. And what do we call it? The Melbourne. So your weapon tracking speed is the, sl the, f um, the fastest of your ship speed or your turret tracking speed. So if your turret tracking, so if, if, if it's a turret, it will use the tracking speed, the turret tracking speed that you set it to, unless the ship speed is faster than that. Um, if it's not turreted, so in other words, if it's a spinal or a, just a standard weapon, then it will use the ship tracking speed or the um, uh, the base the base technological tracking speed. And if your fire control speed is faster than is faster than that, then you'll still work with the weapon tracking speed. So essentially, um, like for example, yes, your fire control is able to track the target and it's able to watch it as it flies past you, but your turret lags behind because it can't turn fast enough if its tra if its tracking speed is too low. Um, so in order to actually hit, it has to try and pre-align the turret. It has to lead the target. And um, it can't really do that because a ship can turn very easily and it can change. So you can't lead a ship. A missile flies in a straight line, so you can lead a missile, hence where the tracking bonus comes from um, over time. But the but with a ship, you can't lead the target. So it's limited by the, by the turret tracking speed. Um, so you need to make sure, so optimally, you need to make sure that your weapon tracking speed and your fire control tracking speed are aligned. Because if your weapon tracking speed or your, or your fire control tracking speed are misaligned, you're wasting one of them. So, yeah, like I said, when it comes to beams, they uh, the the f accuracy calculations and all that get insanely complex. Um, and at the end of the day, as long as you keep track of the basics, the simple ideas and the concepts, you should be fine. So, and and, and those concepts are maximum possible range. Um, up to the maximum range of the laser. Um, lasers and plasma carronades have the longest range, so you'll probably, 
always be lagging behind, but other weapons are going to obviously have shorter range. So things like Mazons um, is not, you're, you're potentially not going to exceed it. So you need to make sure that this number is um, as high as possible. Um, obviously, if your tracking speed has a longer range, it's going to have better accuracy to shoot. So even though your um, weapon can't hit them, at the maximum range when your weapon is that when they actually do come into range of your weapon then you'll have a higher accuracy at the weapon's maximum range um and when it comes to tracking speed obviously you want it to be as fast as possible for point defense and for if you're using a separate fire control for your ship for anti-ship uh, duties then you need to make sure that it is at minimum as fast as the, the ship that you're going to be shooting at um, yeah, so hopefully you can keep track of all that. Obviously it's recording, so you guys are going to be able to rewind, um, and hopefully haven't rambled on, but, uh, that is what you basically need to keep track of when it comes to fi being fire controls. So for the fire purposes, max range, max tracking speed, because I don't want to be caught out with them having, uh, faster ships and then me not being able to actually hit the bastards. Um, what are we up to? 21 minutes. We've got nine minutes left. So we'll go ahead and hurry up with the sensors and the fire control track and the, all that. So two sensors complete. Now we're doing the res, the res ones. And then we will have the beam fire control. And then, once that's done, yeah, Iron Drive's gonna finish first, excellent. Once that's done, we can go ahead and design our combat ships. Okay, almost done. There we go. And then the rest of the labs, it's going to take about a month. And there we are. Just going to pause recording for a sec. I had to uh, open up the house. Okay, so we have all of our technology. Let's go ahead and finish off the Melbourne. So, um, a lot of windows in Aurora don't automatically update. So you'll notice we finished our, 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 our military engine, but it's not here. Um, also, our fire control is not going to be here. What you need to make sure is that you can either close the window and reopen it or hit refresh tech and that will refresh the technology um, windows. So here we go. Iron drive. Bolt it on. 11,000 kilometers. That's nice, but the ship's not done yet. So we'll go ahead and lock in our fire control. And see, now that we've got a fire control, we have um, actual stats for our weapon, for our weapons. So max range for the fire control is 256. So that's the max range for a weapon because a weapon can't target any further than our fire control because fire control controls our weapon. Um, what's handy is that we don't need a turret because we have 10,000 tracking speed because that's what our ship speed is. Um, power is still nominal, which is good. And you can now see that now that we actually can shoot, we have um damage ratings so i um thinking it's probably in the 20,000 range 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 for about 25 20 25,000 range but essentially if we can get a point blank we're going to be hitting for 16 damage and even even a, a little bit further out we're going to be getting some good damage at max range. We're going to be hitting for six and six is a good amount of damage. So that's going to be uh, pretty decent for a laser. Um, let's see if we need anything else. Now we're going to need maintenance life. 
because I have a deployment time of 12. So we're going to get some engineering spaces. And now for maintenance, maintenance life needs to be at minimum equal to your deployment time. That's basically a given. If your maintenance life is less than your deployment time, then you either need to re reduce your deployment time, because why not? Um, or you need to increase your maintenance life, because if you uh, run out of supplies, then your ship is going to be dead in the water and could potentially suffer critical failure and blow up. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is your maintenance supplies. This number needs to be at minimum equal to this because if this is less than this then something might break that you won't be able to fix um if that if that component breaks uh, let's see which one it is it's probably going to be the engine it'll probably be the engine either the engine or the fire control one of those two um if it breaks then you have it, it, and it, for example it's your engine you have two choices one take the ship back home for repairs at the shipyard or two lose the ship um, option three is to get a ship with a hangar big enough and go and pick pick up the broken ship and take it home. But essentially, take it home or scuttle. You don't really have a choice. So you need to make sure that your supplies are at least equal to your max repair. The other factor is your failure rate. So this is your annual failure rate. So of the deployment time of 12%, there's an 81% chance that something on this ship will suffer a maintenance failure. Um, what it is, we don't know. We can take a guess based on the damage allocation chart, which I will cover later. But uh, essentially, there's an 81% chance that something will break um, in our 12-month deployment time. This is the um, this is the chance that something will fail in a five-day period. So every five-day period, there is a 1.1% chance that something will break. 1.1%. I like those odds. Um, these two numbers are your one year and five year estimated supply usage. So in one year, so it basically it'll take your annual failure rate and multiply it by uh, and figure out, you know, what are the chances of various components failing and figure out roughly on average how many supplies you will use in a year. So as it is, there's a reasonable odd chance that we will have enough to sustain that ship for a year. But because of the max repair, there's a also a very good chance that something is going to break that we're not going to be able to fix at all. Once again, if it's the engine, we have one, we're dead in the water. Um, same with fuel tanks. If your fuel tanks gets, if all your fuel tanks gets knocked out because you only have one, then you're also, once again, dead in the water. No fuel, no movement. Um, this one, of course, is the five years. So if we let this thing sit for five years, then um, it'll, we can expect it to consume almost 4,000 supplies. So obviously, it's not going to be sitting out that long. So we'll go ahead and stick another one of these. Drops it down to 56, which is nice. And we almost have enough supply. Um, We'll add one more. 573 to 450. That's good. All right. So we have that. So we have deployment. We have one laser. And we have a really fast ship. What I'm going to do, though, is I think I don't necessarily want to swarm these. I think I want a decent combat ship. So what I'm going to do, you can only have one spinal weapon per design. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll give it... four standard lasers. So you can see the range is still equal because the the even the range for this thing exceeds the range of the fire control. Uh, the tracking speed is identical because they're hull mounted, they're not turreted. The power draw is identical, so we're going to need... There we go, another four reactors. Um, obviously, as we're adding mass, the speed is dropping, so the tracking speed is dropping. Um, and rate of fire is fine, and damage output is also going to be reasonable. So what we need to do now is we need to get the speed up as fast as we can, uh, hopefully up to the 16,000. So bolt another engine, 9,000. 
11,000. So we're losing speed too much uh, for each engine, so it's not going to be practical to get up to 16,000. Um, so we could have gotten away with using a smaller fire control because we just can't get it up there, but whatever. Um, that way we only have to have one. Um, so we'll get more engineering spaces. There we go. We also want a bit more fuel. There's a need to get that range up. Now, this thing is only going to be used for protecting Earth. So, what kind of range do we need? 1 billion kilometers will easily cover the entire inner system and get us out to Jupiter. So, and we got five. So, this is a good amount of fuel. We have a few, a few spare tanks as well, and we have some spare engines. We've got 10,000 speed, which is excellent. We've got the year of maintenance life, which is also good. And we can repair our most expensive component. Twice over. Okay. So, that way, if our most expensive component fails, we can repair two of them which is uh, extremely useful. It's also extremely useful because if engineering spaces get knocked out, we're going to lose supplies, and then we're going to lose our ability to um, do anything. Now, we don't have damage control yet, so we're going to rely on our engineering spaces for that. Um, that's really low, so if something breaks on this thing or if we suffer combat damage, it's pretty much going to be useless to us. But uh, that is what we're going to have to do. Uh, ah, we need our sensors. There, we add these two. 13,000 ton frigate for... Actually, there's probably a destroyer by now. There we go, destroyer. So, a 13,000 ton destroyer. One and one half years maintenance life, which is above the deployment time. We've got a little bit of armor. Not too much, but... Uh, one, 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 four layers of armor will have to do. Hopefully we don't get shot by anything huge. Um, and we've got 5 billion kilometers range, which is excellent. We've got a decent uh, amount of firepower, which is great. A single fire control is not optimal because if it gets blown up, um, the entire ship is useless. But them's the brakes. We don't have the... Um... Actually, do we? How much is a fire control? If we add a second fire control, so we'll lose 400 kilometers a second. And we'll pick up almost 500 tons. But no, this this is it's it's too useful to have two of them. So that is what we will do. All right, that is going to be a decent beam ship. There we are. And it's time for a break. So uh, in the next episode, we will uh, duplicate the Melbourne and uh, replace its armament with some uh, Goss cannons, just in case the invaders decide to throw missiles at us. Um, hopefully they don't, and hopefully um, we have enough point defense if they do. And uh, we will continue on from there. Thank you for watching.